So that made me nervous hearing that they weren't identifying who allegedly did the shooting and that if I went into Newtown to try to exercise that place that I would be in fact framed. So I was living in the Shelton area at that time and I drove that weekend, the 15th, the 15th and the 16th to see my friend in Brookfield, Danbury area. And as I drove by, there was always traffic in and out of Newtown. So I decided, I believe it was Monday, that I was gonna go into Newtown and take out those Drax and Demons no matter what threats the Illuminati was gonna make on me. So when I got off the exit, the cops were blocking the road into Sandy Hook and directing all traffic uh, down toward where there's more of a, I guess the commercial side of Newtown where the stores are and the gas stations. Sandy Hook is a more residential area. There were hundreds of news vans and there was, and there was lots of uh, trucks out there and it was just a huge, huge crowds of people and they were walking down the main road in Newtown to the uh, school, the Sandy Hook School, where there was a a memorial with candles lit. So I drove until I found a parking lot and I got out and I started walking down with the crowds of people into Sandy Hook. Now as I got closer to Sandy Hook Elementary School, I had never been there before, but there was this little strange red abandoned building that was nearby the school. And as I walked past this building, they had a man placed who looked like, I don't know the actor's name, but the guy that played Jerry Lundergaard in Fargo, he was a strange looking guy, only he had a mustache. Now I noticed him because he looked, uh, his eyes looked like he was not there and he had a an African-American woman, approximately 30 years old, walking him around. He looked like a homeless person that had um, mental problems, like he couldn't, he couldn't uh, look, af look out after himself. And I recognized him from somewhere else. And I had passed him in like a Walmart or something and he was being walked along in the Walmart by another handler. So as I walked past him, 
what happens is when you take someone's demon or drac out, usually you feel like a horrible burning sensation within you. Depending on how many demons they have and what type of demon it is, he had, of course, a drac and it just burned, it just burned. And you feel like, uh, if you're not used to it, you're gonna feel like you're gonna have a heart attack, I'm gonna die. But once you get used to it, you get used to it. So I continued walking and I saw the little memorial thing that they had set up there with the candles and I tried to walk uh, farther. I walked right up to the cop, the cops that had blockaded that part of the school and the cops said, uh, you can't go any farther there, buddy. But uh, I turned around and I started walking back down the street. And this time, in front of the same abandoned building, it looked like it had been like a house at one point and then converted to like maybe a diner or some type of store, but now it was just vacant. And I think there was a couple boards over the windows, but they had a large, man who was uh, a big white dude like he was about you know six and a half feet tall 240 250 pounds and he looked uh, very very disturbed and he was dressed up like uh, kind of like a police officer in that he had like uh, he didn't have a gun didn't have a badge but he had like police officer type clothes and he had like a green um, reflective jacket as if he was like involved in security or uh, uh, helping people cross the street as in traffic or something. But he glared at me like he wanted to kill me and I glared back at him like I wanted to fight him. And Another drac went into me. And I'm thinking that those two guys were gonna be utilized for some sort of terrible ritual because they couldn't control those dracs and demons. The dracs and demons control a lot of people, especially the CIA, the Vatican, and the Illuminati. Almost nobody could tolerate the pain. And the demons kind of well up in someone to the point where they're completely out of control and the cult fears them as they would fear the uh, character Pyramid Head in the movie Silent Hill, if that makes any sense. So those were the two individuals that uh, were, were harboring those drags and would have been used as some sort of sacrificial priest, is my guess. So I killed both those Drax, annihilated the energy, and left Newtown. The witches continued to attack me, and a 
couple times due to the plants and witchcraft spells. I uh, heard a lot of chanting. I uh, there's a lot of like incense smell, smell of incense, a lot of chanting, and at one point I heard uh, in a very high pitched voice. Now Belial is known to haunt the women, like I said, the Our Lady of Sorrows order. And he has a high pitched screeching like voice. And Moloch he has an extremely low voice. Now even though I fought Moloch in 2010, I didn't kill it. So Belial, he said to Moloch, or it said to Moloch, he just keeps on killing us. And Moloch replied something to the effect, you go down and handle it then. So I woke early in the morning. It was daylight, it was dawn. I saw a flash in the sky. And uh, something hit the earth, and it shook the earth, and it was the biggest track I've ever seen, and it charged at me like a ball, and it hit me, and I felt like my heart was going to stop that instant, and I fought Belial all day, all day I fought that fucking thing. Sometimes the battles only go on for maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes. However, with Belial, it took many hours to kill and annihilate all that Drax energy.